Welcome. In this video, we'll learn about campaign management in Salesforce and how to use campaigns to manage lead generation efforts. We'll discuss the value of Salesforce campaigns and how they can benefit marketers during the customer journey. We'll review how to build out campaigns and define key terms like campaign hierarchy and campaign members. We'll show you how it's done with a demo where we create a campaign and review its data. Then we'll end with some best practices, helpful tips, and resources to learn more. Let's get started with the value that Salesforce campaigns can bring to your organization. As a marketer, you know that a campaign is a specific marketing activity or series of activities that promotes a product or service. Campaigns are a great way to track and analyze prospect engagement across multiple touch points. In Salesforce, the campaign object can be used to track marketing campaigns and connect individual marketing efforts to prospects. Campaigns can also help you showcase the leads and opportunities that your marketing initiatives generate. Make smarter budgeting decisions based on past campaign performance, repeat your best campaigns, and scrap those that underperform. Track prospects from source to opportunity and learn what influenced them on their journey. Use the Campaign Influence Reporting tool to identify campaigns that lead to successful opportunities. Show leadership the ROI results of your marketing campaigns and celebrate the pipeline generated. So how does campaign management fit into the sales lifecycle and customer journey? Teams create campaigns with the goal of driving business through leads. So campaign management starts here at the beginning of the customer journey and runs alongside lead management. During campaign management, we can associate the campaign object with leads and contacts within campaigns. This connection is what allows for reporting and deeper analysis. The first step is to plan, then build out the campaign. When it comes to building campaigns, make sure you are intentional and plan a campaign strategy ahead of time. This step will save cleanup efforts later on. In the campaign planning stage, consider these three key areas, goals, metrics, and parameters. Let's imagine in this coming year, we want to set up a series of campaigns with the goal to increase brand awareness. We need to consider what metric will help track progress and measure success against this goal. For this example, let's include target numbers for lead scores, website visits, and conversions. Lastly, we need to outline the parameters for the campaign, for example, naming conventions, cost, and campaign types. We'll decide how much to invest in each campaign based on our annual marketing budget and place our spend in different campaign types. Now that we have the campaign strategy, we can build out the individual campaigns. For each individual campaign, we'll include relevant information such as campaign name, type, and budgeted cost. Then we can connect them into a campaign hierarchy that's a parent-child relationship. To associate leads and contacts to a campaign, Salesforce uses the campaign member object. Once you create a campaign, think about the types of statuses that would be appropriate for its members. For example, for an email promotion in our campaign strategy, we might want the campaign member status field to include sent, opened, and converted. Once a campaign is created and the statuses have been updated, you can add your campaign members with the appropriate statuses. This helps add granularity when reporting on campaign performance. By using campaigns and campaign members, you can track lead engagement. You may also want to understand how that engagement impacts purchasing decisions. For that to happen, campaign members have to become contact roles on opportunities. Contact roles are automatically created when a lead is converted to a contact and opportunity, as long as the lead was already associated with a campaign as a campaign member. Contact roles allow Salesforce to track campaign influence on opportunities, and you can report on them to understand how campaigns influence your pipeline. Now that we've reviewed the basics, let's dive into Salesforce to see a campaign in action. From the homepage, we'll select Campaigns. Let's start with looking at a parent-child campaign relationship and click Monthly Newsletter. Then click the Campaign Hierarchy button. Here we find a single parent monthly newsletter with two child campaigns linked to it. Let's go back into the campaign object and create another child campaign for the September edition of the monthly newsletter. Click New and make sure the child campaign record type is selected and click Next. We'll enter the campaign name and description. 
Then select Monthly Newsletter from the Parent Campaign drop-down to associate it with that parent. Let's select Email as the type. And then check out the Status Options and select Planned for this one. These options are customizable, and you can learn more by going to Salesforce Help. Now, let's go to the start date and select September 1st. We'll run this campaign through the month of September. And select the active checkbox so that we can relate opportunities to the campaign. Under planning, we can add some additional information, including the budgeted cost and expected revenue. Notice there's also a place to enter the actual campaign cost under Campaign Results. But for now, we'll click Save. Let's click the Hierarchy button again and confirm that our child campaign is listed under the parent. If we click into the September newsletter, we can review all of the information that we just added. Now we're ready to add campaign members. Let's click Related. Notice that we have zero campaign members added so far. We'll click Leads and search for Leads to Add and select some others from the list. Then click Next. We can confirm that the leads are selected for the September newsletter campaign. The default status is Sent, but Responded is also an option. We'll keep the member status and click Submit. The campaign members are now listed on the Related tab. We can also add contacts, so let's click Add Contacts, select a few contacts, and click Next. Everything looks good, so we'll click Submit to finish adding them. Back in the campaign members list, we can see the type of member and their name. By clicking into a contact name, we can confirm that they've been added to the September newsletter. Let's finish up with one more quick tip and go back to the campaign members list. If we need to, we can also import a list of leads and contacts to save time in the future. For now, let's go back to the campaign and review the details. We now have four leads and three contacts in the campaign. We're ready to go. As we wrap up, here are some tips to help you achieve success with campaign management. First, Align campaigns with your marketing process for better reporting. Think about your real-life marketing steps, then design campaigns to follow this flow. Always document naming conventions for consistent content organization by team members using campaigns or marketing assets. Your Salesforce account can get cluttered if campaigns are created inconsistently. Streamline the process by building and cloning common record types as templates. And finally, since reporting on campaigns shows how your team drives revenue and highlights areas for improvement, focus on key metrics and consider using Salesforce's pre-made reports. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics in Salesforce Help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.